He said David couldn't do the things he had the mind to do because he had walls all over. Every war, every battle that has delayed your entry into your destiny, every battle that has fought that business with you, every battle that has made you sick in your body and in your finance, the Lord will put every such under your feet in the name of Jesus. As this seventh month come to an end, seven represent rest. As the seventh month come to an end, in the last day of the month, in the name of Jesus, every battle that has read his head, every war that has been raging, that is as if is consuming you, family, business, and career, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and the Lord put it under his foot. This morning, every such issues or battles is coming under your feet in the name of Jesus. God is giving you victory over it like never before in the name of Jesus. God gives you victory over that battle in the name of Jesus. God gives you victory over that issue in the name of Jesus. God gives you victory over whatever it is that is contrary in the name of Jesus. Can we have verse 4 quickly? Verse 4, verse 4, verse 4. And the Lord, and but now the Lord my God, he said he has given me rest on every side. So that there be neither adversary, nor there be any evil current. Every adversary that there was, he said the rest of the Lord has swallowed up every adversary. Every adversary will be swallowed up by the rest of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will so give you rest that every adversary will be swallowed up. Every evil current be swallowed up. Every evil appearance be swallowed up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. And you will testify. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said he couldn't amount to much because there were battles everywhere. Wars everywhere. So much God wants to do. And when I read it, my mind went, you know, to our dear country, Nigeria. So much God wants to do. So much endowment everywhere. And yet, the nation cannot, you know, cannot break through an amount of greatness because there are battles to be fought everywhere. And my prayer this season is that every battle raging against this nation shall be subdued in the name of Jesus. The Lord will grant rest all over in the name of Jesus. You know when the nation is at rest, it affects every one of us. It affects every one of us. Are you aware that the loaf of bread is selling for almost 1,000 for almost 1, naira? Why? Because the people why why? Because there is war raging. Can't even buy. At times when I stop to buy corn on my way home, and they tell me one two fifty, I say, "Is it pandarium? <laughs> Can you say a cup of corn two fifty? Or you can't blame them because nobody can go to the farm. Everybody's afraid. So the peace of the Lord will reign over this land in the name of Jesus. And that peace will not come just like that because you, because you desire it, because you want it. No, the peace will come when you and I begin to do the things that we are supposed to do. That is why I have titled it, it's a fight for your future. It's a fight for our future. You must begin to, you know, demand and begin to, you know, lay hold on that which is yours. That's the only way the nation will change. Unfortunately, that's the only way. As I was growing up, I'm not a young man anymore. 
I remember 1979, uh, I was still a very small boy, 1979. My parents, you know, humble people. My dad was a nurse. My mom was a nurse also. 1979, we were at home when my dad drove in a brand new 504. Brand new. He could afford a nurse to buy a brand new car today. Ah, God help you. A nurse, they bought tear rubber. 1979. Tear rubber. 1979, dollar to naira. It was 50 naira to one dollar. 79.80. 50 naira to one dollar. One naira to two dollars. We were ahead of them. What has happened? 50 kobo. Yes. 50 kobo. Thank you. It was 50 kobo to one dollar. What has happened? It was one naira to two dollars. 50 kobo to one dollar. What has happened? When I read, when I read Judges chapter 9, I began to understand, you know, began to see and understand what has happened. In Judges chapter 9, we don't have a time to read the whole of the, you know, you know, passage this morning. Let's have just verse 1. Let's have just verse 1. And maybe verse 4. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubah, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and said to all the family of his house, of his mother's father. Do we have the time? Okay, let's just take only two. No, no, no. Go back to two first so that you can see the drift. Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem. Whether it's better for you, either that all of the sons of Jerubah, which are three score, 70 of them, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your own, my brother. Tiwa, tiwa. So, the issue of ethnicity or the issue of my brother, my sister, for you to vote did not start today. Oh. They said he was not the one to rule. He went to his family, his mother's people in Shechem, and told them, now we, we, let's take over this land. Let's not allow the sons of Gideon to rule over us. And he's got to verse 4. And his, and his mother's people, they supported him. And he went to take area boys. They went to take area boys. They gave him money. He went and hired area boys. And they went to murder, they murdered the sons of Gideon. The Bible says, and they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver, seventy, and out of the house of Barbaret, wherewith Abimelech hired vain men. Some, 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 some versions will tell you worthless men. Area boys in our local parlance. They went, uh, he went and rented area boys. What did they do today? Last week, they said somewhere in Surulede where they were registering. Area boys came there and scattered everywhere. Scattered everywhere. Took everything away. Area boys, gri gri, did he start today? Oh. Gideon, when he was ruling and reigning, there was peace in the land. Abimelech came and upturned everything. Only one of the sons of Gideon escaped. His name is Jotan. And Jotan declared, Jotan ran away. And Jotan now began to declare. We don't have all the time to read it. Jotan gave them the parable of the trees. He said the trees wanted to, you know, get a leader over them. When the trees had a meeting to have a leader over them, he said all the good trees refused to rule over them. He said, it's only the brown bush that agreed to rule over them. He was making reference to the person of Abimelech. That why every one of us, why we sat down. That's why I said in 1979, Nigeria was still very good. Even long after that. But all of you here, some of us here, you know, our parents that should have taken over, they sat down. 
They allow the Abimelech of their time to take over the nation. That is where we are. That's why we are where we are today, brethren. They allow the Abimelech and the area boys and the wayward and the worthless men to take over the nation. So now that they have taken over Nigeria, the nation, brothers and sisters, the only way to take it back is action for action. Hallelujah. And the action that we are asking you, you know, because, you know, that is why, because it's the last day of registration and you still don't have your voter's card, there's no excuse. It's been open for I don't know how many years now. Somebody should go get your own. The only power you have to wrestle it from them is your card. It's your card. That is the only power you and I, we have. God has blessed Nigeria. If I may let you know, God will keep blessing us. But God is waiting for somebody who will take them, who will take it from the hands of the Abimelech and the wayward and the worthless people. And how do you take it, brethren? Then you and I must begin to engage in that battle that will be able to deliver Nigeria back to us. Until and unless the wayward people will keep ruling us. And the condition may not change, unfortunately. May not change. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 40, 40 47 verse verse. verse Verse 27, 47, 27. Meanwhile, the people of Israel settled in the region of Goshen in Egypt and they acquired properties and they were fruitful and their population grew rapidly. It reminds me of, you know, what was happening before Abimelech took over. But what happened, there was a sudden change. Sudden change. By the time you get into Exodus chapter 1, verse 11, another king that knew no Joseph came in. And they began to put them on that tax master and they began to enslave them. And things were tough for them. Tough, very, very tough. They sent over the tax master to afflict them and to, and to put them on that heavy burden. And what did the Lord do? God could have just in heaven just said, okay, uh, let them go, let them go. No, the people, mo you must fight for it. And that is why, you know, in... Exodus chapter 3, let's go to verse 16. Exodus 3, 16 and 17. Quickly. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord thy God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, has appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and I have seen, you know, what is done to you in Egypt. Verse 17. He said, and I have said, I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt into the land of Canaan, uh, uh, the land of the Hittite, the land of the Amorite, the land of the Perizzite, the land of the Hevite, the land of the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. That is that. That, is, that was God's plan for them. I can tell you, the land flowing with milk and honey did not just come because God said it. It came because men went to battle. It didn't just come. Do, does Nigeria, sorry, you know, God wants a better Nigeria? Yes, and yes, and yes. But it will not come until you and I, we face the Abimelech of our days, in that battle of election and throw them out and put the men that God will walk through to make us a better nation. Brethren, it's a fight. And until you and I, you see it as such, then it becomes challenging. That is why in that passage, I love, I love what Solomon was saying. Let's hear more from Solomon again. First King chapter 5. First King chapter 5, verse 3. Then we'll go to verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 15. First King 5, 3. You know that my father David was not able to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord, his God, because of the many wars waged by surrounding nations. He could not build until God gave him victory over all his enemies. First Kings 8, 56. 
when God has brought Solomon to a place and was able to build, I like what Solomon said here. Joshua said the same thing. But I like what Solomon said. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people according to all that he promised. There had not failed one word of all his promises which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. God told Moses, I will take them out. But in taking out, he took them battles, wars, for them to enter into the promised land. It's the same thing for every one of us, brethren, even for your own personal life. It will take it, look, you, it, once you are born again, the grace to become another man, to become a better man, a better family, to rewrite the name of your family once again, and you know, better and better is available. But it is only the man who understands the dynamics of battle and wars that is able to translate from the life of slavery, of servitude into a life of abundance in Christ. It's the same thing with us as a nation. It is only the people that understand that, yes, God has blessed us. You have very few nations that are as blessed as Nigeria. But how come as blessed as we are, we are still suffering so much as a nation? Why? Because men, we have refused to arise. So, brother, let's arise this year. Let's arise. Nehemiah 4.14. Nehemiah 4.14 is our popular passage here. Nehemiah 4.14. Let's have it on the screen. Is a time to is a, is a time to fight. And Nehemiah said, and I looked and I rose up and I said unto the nobles and the rulers and to the rest of the people. He said, be ye not afraid of them. He said, remember the Lord which is great and terrible and let us fight for our brethren. He said, let us fight for our sons. Let us fight for our daughters. Let us fight for our wives and let us fight for our houses. Let us fight. He said, because there is a job to be done, there is a work to be done. He said, there are oppositions in the land that are not allowing us to do the things that we must do. He said, for us to do the things that God has assigned for us to do, you must remember that you have a son, that you have a daughter, that you have a wife, that you have a house. And then let the burden to fight arise within you. If there is a burden to fight, you will leave your house 6 a.m. until you get your card out of that place. Because there's no burden. Because there is nothing that is driving us. I'm sure if you live close to where those, you know, bandits and Boko Harams are, you know, ask, ask your friends in Abuja. I'm sure they are all shaking and afraid now. If you know anybody in Abuja, call them and ask them. Everybody's afraid. Because they are itching closer and closer and closer and closer. Because there is a government that refused to do nothing or say nothing. And sorry, you know, I'm trying not to be political this morning. But again, even every, every of the people that are shouting, vote for me, vote for me, nobody has stood up now or before to condemn whatever those evil men are doing. Why? Because you feel if I condemn it, some people will don't want to vote for me. In fact, somebody even stood. He said, the person, the person that wrote something on my behalf, he said, that was not me speaking. How dare you say that? Somebody just died. Somebody was mobbed and burned. Somebody wrote out, you know, you know, something on your behalf to show how humane you are. And you said, I never said that thing. And uh, you never said it the way you would have preferred you should have been said. Why? Because we have allowed the Abimelechs to be the one ruling this nation. And I tell you, and every day, every day, I still see men and women clapping and clamoring and running after them. I wonder, what is it that they, what is it that I'm not seeing? Brethren, it's a battle. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24, have God having promised everything. He has told them, we'll tell them to the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. In Deuteronomy 20, uh, 2, 
24, he said, Arise, take your journey, and pass over river Ammon. Behold, I have given unto you, unto thy hand, Sihon the Amorite, the king of Hezbon, and his land. He said, Begin to possess it, and begin to contend with him in battle. Because if there's no contention, there's no release. It's a contention that brings the release. I can tell you some of them are already shaky. Let the, yes, say, ah, they are, they are all internet voters. Let, let it be internet voter. It is when the crowd, it is when the cloud has gathered, it will empty its content upon everybody. Let there be cloud voters. Let there be, you know, be, uh, uh, internet, whatever. But let's keep the pressure on. Let's keep it on, brethren. Let's keep it on. And I know that when God, the Bible said, God said, I have seen the cry of the people and I have come to bring deliverance. When God sees, when God sees the yearning of your heart, when God sees the yearning of my heart, I believe God, deliverance will come Nigeria's way this season in the name of Jesus. That deliverance will come your way this season in the name of Jesus. That God will reach out to you and your family this season in the name of Jesus. In Psalm chapter 40 verse 3. Psalms 40 verse 3. I want to try and round up now. Psalms 40 verse 3. And he has given me, he has given unto me a new song. The New Living Translation, if you have that. He has given me a new song. He has, he has given me a new song to sing. A hymn of praise to my God. He said, many will see what he has done and be amazed. And they will put their trust even in God. My prayer for you this season is that what God will begin to do for you, we amaze many in the name of Jesus. What God will begin to do for your families, we amaze many in the name of Jesus. What God will begin to do for you, we put a new song, a new song, and a new hymn in your mouth and in your heart in the name of Jesus. Ah, God, the Bible is saying that that healing condition, oh, that sick condition will be reversed in the name of Jesus. Ah, he's saying that deficit condition has been deficit from January even up to the seventh month. As we enter into the eighth month, ah, that deficit condition is reversed for you and your families in the name of Jesus. Uh, that letter of appointment will show up in the name of Jesus. Every hold of delay is removed from the way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That promotion will be announced. That promotion will be announced. In the name of Jesus. By putting a new song in your mouth. In the name of Jesus. You shall be an amazement to others. Everyone who has doubted you thus far. As we enter into the eighth month. It shall be an addition. And a breaking part for you and your families. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, somebody declare Nigeria shall be an amazement to others. In the